Craig, Craig Eisers, Mimi's wife for North. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> husband. <laughs> Reverse that. <laughs> uh, well, great. Uh, you're welcome. Um, So first up for your consideration, minutes from the January 9th meeting. Move we accept them. Second. Any comments? Or? I provided a few down here. Uh, DJ. AJ. One of the J's. One of the J's. All in favor of accepting those minutes? Aye. Aye. Great. Next, the minutes from January 12th, which would be Saturday. We accept the Saturday, January 12th minutes. Second. Okay. We sent him that week. Mm -hmm. We sent him. I sent him. You did. You sent them. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. Any uh, comments or thoughts? I did not have the chance to read that. I thought the format was a little different. That was okay. I agree with you. Well, all in favor of accepting the minutes as presented by Ned? Aye. 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 Great. Um, so Karen is here for item number two under new business. Make a motion to take item number two out of order. Second. Okay. So you've got a couple of things in your packet. Um, a proposal about forming a zero waste committee. And a copy of the scope of a technical assistance grant that we got from the Department of Environmental Protection to support this going forward, and also um, the application that I'm proposing to use. And I wanted to send that to you because it, it kind of it, it has the um, kind of the classic definition of zero waste. It's one that most communities are using at the top of this page, and it's the beginning of kind of a mission statement. Um, of what this committee would actually be doing. So, um, just to back up a little bit, this is um, one of the last recommendations that we're trying to implement from the uh, Solid Waste Reduction and Management Task Force that met until April of 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is really an opportune time to, to be um, moving ahead with this because of the landfill closure. Um, people are really beginning to pay attention to all kinds of um, waste reduction, waste management, cost factors, and other issues. So it's a, it's a wonderful time to be reaching out to public education and getting input about how we can get on the path um, with some goals and some timelines and this we certainly can be responsible for implementing some of these things. Uh, one of the other concepts is that it would be kind of in the same format as the sustainability plan that was adopted a couple of years ago. But the, that was concentrating on transportation, land use, public participation, and a couple of other topic areas. And waste management was barely even touched on in that plan. So the scope talks about it being adopted this plan um, does need to be adopted by the city, but we're not really sure what the mechanism is. That's going to be part of our process. Is, you know, who's, who's going to put a stamp of approval on this plan when the committee finishes? And it is an ad, ad hoc committee. We're thinking that they're going to complete their work on by July 1. Karen, how will the, um, the grant be used? What are the sorts of expenses you're, you're expecting? Um, a technical assistance grant is just Arlene Miller's time. So she's the municipal assistance coordinator. So she'll be, um, think of this, this zero waste committee is kind of being a steering committee that will be, uh, to some extent, telling Arlene and, and myself, you know, what to research. And, you know, so we'll be doing some of the support work for the committee. So it's basically her time. And I don't expect there's going to be any expense. I'm not
not planning on coffee or donuts or anything for the meeting. Mm. Well, that's good. <laughs> Any uh. questions? Mike? Is there overlap between this proposed committee and the committee you already have with the residents? So the the Reeves committee is very much focused on two things. One is um, they would like to establish a permanent reuse center in the city, and the other is that they are um, very involved with uh, <coughs> helping the DPW to actually implement these um, reuse events that we've been successfully rolling out. Um, so, you know, they're the volunteer um, force behind that and help to, uh, you know, give input on, on the types of activities and the, you know, how we run those. So they're, and they're, they are very, very focused on reuse. Of course, reuse is part of their waste, but they're more of an action team. They don't want to sit down and write, think about policies as much. Um, you know, they don't want to talk about it. They want to just do it. Um, so it, I think it would be a mistake to take that kind of energy and try to put them at a table, you know, pouring over other, you know, these are basically master plans. You know, there's a lot of examples that other uh, communities have come up with. So we're going to be taking all these models and um, customizing it for New Canton. I think this would drive them nuts to, to just be talking and planning. Yeah. Um, I noticed that most of the people that are on the reuse committee have applied to be on this committee, so yeah. will there be anybody left to be on the reuse well, committee? Um, we actually haven't advertised very widely um, about this. I, I suspect that some of the um, the overlap people will, you know, they, they'll come to the first few meetings because they're they are very, very interested. But when it comes to, down to like, buckling down and writing the plan, I, I doubt that they'll be quite, you know, they might be, they, I see them going off into different tangents, like if, like Amherst uh, just banned styrofoam takeout containers. I could see that group going off and trying to figure out how they could do that as part of a zero waste plan, but I don't really see them being the kind of members that would really be interested in doing research and writing as much. But I could be wrong. And we and I think we will get some other applicants as time goes on. We haven't really been um, promoting it too much because it, the committee hasn't actually been established yet. If I could just ask a question, Jim. So would you, I mean you two have been in the reuse committee more than the rest of us. Would you agree that do, do you see more of a role for some combination than Karen is seeing? Um, I, I do. I, guess I, I, I see that the reuse committee might actually become a subset of this committee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there are some clearly some action oriented people on the reuse committee and, um, and uh, I guess I'm trying to figure out where this Know, where this need is evolving out of. Well, it, it actually came out of the recommendation of the Solid Waste Reduction and Management Task Force. One of their recommendations, which I put on the uh, proposal, was mm -hmm. to adapt a zero waste plan. And they gave some examples of what could go in that. But we really need a group to actually um, formulate an action plan. I don't think it should come out of the city staff. I think it should be a very inclusive kind of process and be on the committee. Well, that was a lot. Um, I'm not sure why we're anticipating motives and actions of people that might be on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we'd like to see is um, some discussion with the board about who might be on this committee, look at members on this, this other reuse committee, whether they might be appropriate or not. Karen has put together a form to, so, to solicit other residents that might be interested in serving on the committee, mm -hmm. and then determining who might be on the committee, whether that's something you want Karen to decide who sits on there, whether any board members want to sit on there. We have this technical assistance.
assistance grant with the, the assistance as Karen mentioned. We have the task force charged to sort of get a zero waste plan together for the community. So it's a good thing. I think what we're trying to determine is how to appoint the committee and how to move forward. And there could be some overlap. Obviously, we've got some people pretty dedicated to doing solid waste issues in town right now. I don't know why they wouldn't be, some of these folks wouldn't be ideal, particularly if they volunteer. I'm not sure if someone would volunteer and decide they didn't like it or something. I don't really know. Um, the, the question I have is just in terms of staffing support. I mean, I know Karen's been working a lot with the reuse committee, and then there's this on top of that mm -hmm. with the transition, I guess. Well, uh, putting that question out. Yeah, I, I think we've already, Arlene and I have already gotten a head start, so we, um, we have copies of resolutions that other municipalities have adopted. We have copies of action plans. So I, I think we have a good idea of what's involved and it's it is kind of taking taking what others have done before us and customizing it to make it interesting. Um, um, thank you for your comments, Jim. I also think um, that it's really it was a glaring deficit in the sustainability plan that there wasn't more about solid waste. And so I'm, I think that working on this as a proposal I'm wondering if we would want to maybe put, I mean, unless there's an appetite for more people on the board, um, I really don't want to be on both committees, maybe put the Solid Waste Committee on a hiatus until this committee has finished with their um, responsibilities. I don't know if that's a possibility. You mean to put the Reuse Committee on? Yes, yes, okay. yes, exactly. Because there was that sub-little task force that was working, yeah. it was also sort of called. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's another option as well. Karen, what are you looking for from us tonight? Well, I um, we don't have any applications for you to actually accept yet. Um, so I wanted to get familiar with, mm -hmm. with what we're talking about and um, support it. Yeah. And we'll keep reporting back to you. I expect by the next board meeting, I would have applications, and, um, it, and probably even a proposed first meeting date. That's so and can you, I, so let me know if this feels okay. Can you work with MJ and Roe and the people on the existing mm -hmm. committee and brainstorm a little bit about this new committee? Just, just so they have a chance to... Well, it's been on their agenda a couple of meetings, so I think they, they do have an idea of what it is. Okay. But um, certainly, yes, I will be happy to work with you to make sure that they're inclusive. Thank you. Uh, and one of the things that, I've, um, that came out of the, the, the Solid Waste Reduction and Management Task Force, the one some vagueness early on to the, sort of the whole process was there seemed to be language that said that the city council and board of public works. There seemed to be more of a collaborative statement about shall appoint committees to do this, and we sort of raised that issue about a year about a year ago. And the question was, you know, who was really appointing? There was some sort of shared responsibility in the language that came out of that earlier report. Do you remember that? Because I'd asked that. So as the recommendations came out, mm -hmm. the city council and board of public works. Oh, oh, that with that there was that joint statement. Yeah. It's almost a joint statement that came out that I felt was a good one because it indicated that it wasn't just in our court. The city council was mm -hmm. something we needed mm -hmm. to be participate in this mm -hmm. appointing a committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I guess I just want to, um, since we're referring back to that document, that there was a reason for that statement to be made in the way that it was. But I would want to review that language to be honest with yeah. you because I thought it was recommendations to the Board of Public Works is, is what my recollection of that document yeah. is. So it's a pretty good question for asking if you're broadly appointing authority in this case. Well if the language is does is that and, and you know I'm certainly not challenging that um, then 
I mean, the public needs that work. They're clearly in the whether... venue of us in terms of managing the solid waste piece. I mean, we took it up and we ran with it because we, but there was that vagueness early on about shouldn't city council. There seemed to be some language that said city council should be involved yeah. in some aspect of moving this. Forward. Yeah. Are you talking about specific recommendations? Because I do have those, and there, um, there was the mayor, in, well, in cooperation with the mayor of city council a task force to create a volunteer run reuse, and reuse programs until the more permanent center park can be identified and established. Mm -hmm. so basically said in cooperation with uh, this, the Board of Public Works actually said appointed that as a subcommittee of the Board of Public Works with two board members on it. But I think the, the cooperation has, has, you know, we have been communicating with the mayor and the two weeks ago went to the city council and we're talking about mm -hmm. um, and there was one other one that mentioned in cooperation with the board of health and city council increase the funds for illegal dumping and littering and we basically followed up on that and found that all the um, through MGL laws and uh, city ordinances we had enough in place and we didn't really need to do anything about new regulations we needed to figure out better ways of cooperating for enforcement. That's the only two that were um, Well I, I think it's safe to say the board mm -hmm. this sounds great. I, I don't think anyone would say anything at all against it. I, I, I suspect there's some questions about the membership on the committee to what extent it should be dovetailed with the existing committee. Mm -hmm. But as long as we keep working on that, I, I think there's no question that we're supportive. Mm -hmm. I think what might happen is that this committee gets as big as it wants to be, but then there's, there's might be subcommittees or, or groups that are working on particular issues. Yeah. Just as long as no one feels excluded. Yeah. And, and there's some people already put a lot of time in it. Mm -hmm. An updated um, timeline for the, the scope of work? Um, actually, this is the scope of work that was approved by DEP, but there are monthly report <coughs> updates and, and so timelines and, and tasks can actually be tweaked as we go along. We can't always anticipate exactly what you're going to be doing when. So, well, there is a way of um, actually changing that as we go. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm seeing it that says there's a final report that's due that, that will be completed yeah. by August 15th, given that this started up in December. Is that still mm -hmm. a reasonable time frame to be looking at? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. You, you guys all set? Um, are you here for a specific... Uh, I'd just like to make a comment, if I may. Sure. The thing that disturbs me about this last presentation is an operative sentence that says, not advertised very widely. Committee, committee creations. And I think in the past we've, we've seen that many of these committees that are formed are kind of in-group committees, people with an agenda, and they pursue that agenda, and the overall citizens of the city don't really know the committee exists or have much input in it because the committee's already formed before things start to happen. So as far as advertising, I think that is an operative word here. You have to advertise. Mm -hmm. And the fact that some of these committees are pre-formed ahead of time is a little bit disturbing. I don't believe yeah. this is pre-formed. There's an application that's going to go out. Well, it sounds like there's people already being considered for the committee. No, they've indicated some interest, and then they have to fill out some applications. Yeah. So it will all go through the application process the same as, as anything else. So, I mean, it's just that what we noted was that several of the people that are already on the um, reuse committee also had indicated interest on supporting the zero waste. Well, I'm thinking about this. Let the rest of the world know that it's going to happen before it happens. 
Yeah, I, I don't. You guys, Th thank on, you, you guys were on the last committee before the last committee was formed. All right, I appreciate. I think we we appreciate what you're saying, um, and I, I think the. <coughs> That was the gist of what we were trying to say there. Is we need to think a little more about this committee, who's going to be on it, stuff like that. Uh, I don't think it's preformed. I think, in fact, we're asking for a little more discussion about this okay. whole thing. So the, I'm, I'm not sure we're I'm just airing, cross purposes. Just airing a concern that okay. people on the street might hear. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, All right, so let me give you a little um, background about uh, private ways. Want to take item one first? Let's see, we just do it at the end. Okay. That's just a little housekeeping. Is there something about that? that no? No. Okay. Well, do I need to make a motion to take oh, business okay. private ways out of order? Fair enough. <laughs> Items through through eight? All in favor of taking the private ways next? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> All right, so um, I talked to Alan Seawall. Neff has talked to Alan Seawall. There have been some emails back and forth. Alan feels that it would be best if we just stick to the traditional timeline laid out in the ordinance. People send in a petition to the city council. The city council reviews it, sends it to us for our opinion. I think the planning department also That's weighs correct. in on it. Um, and then we schedule a hearing, notify the residents, and go out and view the street. Um, so we were a little out of sequence a couple Saturdays ago. Uh, he'd like us to do them over. There's some discussion about whether we should wait for residents to send in a petition. And um, he's comfortable if we generate the petitions and then send them to the city council in batches as we want to handle the streets. So if we do about five streets a month for the next six months, we'll pretty much work our way through the entire group. Um, so to that end, Ned generated some petitions today for the next batch we're going to look at. Uh, and then also, depending our, on our discussion in the next few minutes, he'll generate petitions for those streets so that we can wait for the proper referral back from the city council, and then we'll have to redo those visits that we made a couple of Saturdays ago. Um, just to go a little further, um, I had been asking how we would handle the expense of surveying and things uh, along those lines. And the <coughs> ordinance states that once we have voted to suggest recommend approval, that we should go ahead and get the plot plan and whatever legal work is required and submit the entire package to the city council. So we'll be spending the money before we know for sure the city council will approve. But that's the ordinance. That's correct. Okay. Oh, that's the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Well, we would presumably be spending money on the streets that we plan to accept. Yes, we, we would not have... Every, not every street. Right. We would have voted to recommend acceptance. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we would, the surveyors would come in, the legal work would begin, and then the entire package would be gift wrapped and handed back to the city council. So, <clears throat> so what is the relevance of discussion and voting on the, the uh, six? Um, there may not be much. Uh, Ned and I have discussed whether we would at least um, run through the list and see if there's anything, any of these streets that we're not going to recommend as being suitable to become a public way. Um, just so that we don't start the process. Sorry. Um, it's the same customer. <laughs> Something's going on. Uh, just so we don't start the process of a petition in a situation where we uh, in, don't anticipate making the recommendation. For example, Isabella Street's clearly not going to make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> see you there. <laughs> With all due respect, can I see? Sure. Okay. 
I haven't read the ordinance in a while, but I did read it, and my recollection is that when citizens submit a petition, there's actually a timeline. That's that, so just so you don't get messed up, I want to remind you, I, I'm not, I can't speak for the street, but on one level I do, Isabella Street actually submitted a petition, it's gone to city council, it's come back to you, you actually were kind enough to do the sewer work, so I didn't say anything, but it's actually, that's the one that I know of that's legitimately in front of you, I yes. do believe. But the notification was improperly worded. And so in that case, sure. Yeah. Then so we have to push it over. Back. Okay. And, and most of the other streets we looked at the other day do not have a petition that's been referred back to us. So even in your case and one other where we have a petition, we didn't word our Okay, I, I thought that that was still pending in the ballot. No, it's been clarified. Now okay. it doesn't like our wording. So, thank you. Does that any questions about that? So I, <coughs> I don't know if we need to... Thoughts on whether we need to go through street by street? I think you should, just like we did the last time, because there is one uh, particular street here that I don't think it should become a public way. Okay. All right. So let's start with number three, Church Street. And discuss whether that, we think that's an appropriate street to become a public way. Whether we would recommend that that be accepted as a public way. Can I make a motion? You I move we accept. We recommend. We recommend, we recommend accepting Church Street as a public way. How's that? I'll second. Okay. And um, any discussion there? It looks like a public way. It functions as a public way. Part of it is a public way. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know which way. It's the easy way. Yeah, that's, so that's easy. an easy one. The city's in a butter and most of it and we use it for access to the maintain the park. Mm -hmm. All right, so all in favor of reckon Yes. I guess we can have the vote that way anyway. Well what we'll do is uh, make these uh, get a petition going on it too. Right. Gives me some direction. Yeah. I like the idea of doing it now because have had, it's all in our minds, it's fresh in our minds, sure. mm -hmm. and then at this point, we're doing it for this point in time, so, and there could be subsequent um, information, but at least we would have been a public record of what we thought at this point in time right after we had seen it. Okay, so everyone who would be prepared at this point to recommend that the City Council accept Church Street, say aye. 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 No, I was just going to suggest that I, I agreed with what Bill was saying, and that um, you know could be pending another input provided at the public hearing mm -hmm. or something. So that pretty well covered it. All right. Uh, next uh, discussion vote on the continue on uh, uh, Edward Square. No, you do it. No, 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 no. City Council uh, consider accepting to be a uh, public way, a private, public, public, public way. Public way. <laughs> okay, any discussion about Ed Edwards Square? It looks like a public way. <laughs> <laughs> it acts like a public way. <laughs> I use it as a public way. All right, everyone who at this point in time would be prepared to recommend that the City Council make Edward Square a public street. Say aye. 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 Okay. okay, discussion on uh, View Avenue. That's the one off of South Street, right? Off of North Street. No, North Street. North Street. North Street. North Street. North Street. 
by the cemetery. Yes. The little short and wide street. Mm -hmm. yeah. I make a motion that we not recommend um, View Avenue as for consideration as a public way. What did you not like? What what can you articulate what troubled you about that? Um, it brought me back to where we were off of um, uh, off of Gothic near Gothic. That big parking lot area where mm -hmm. there might have been some Park public Street. Park Street. Park Street. Mm -hmm. There might have been where it's it's its function as a little driveway has grown over time. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't certain that that made sense. Yeah. I'm just trying to think consistently mm -hmm. through the different ones. It would be certainly be an atypical. It's not a through way. I live on a city street with four houses. Dead end. We're going to get to that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already the street. That's the second part of your public way to <laughs> I felt that you should be accepted. And the reason, you know, comparing the two is that it's it's so much more open, it's longer, whereas park is basically a parking lot. Yeah. You know, it's hard to see a street there. It's all water. And there's no off street parking on park. And there is In fact, one of the points the neighbors made is that the neighborhood uses it as a parking convenience many times in many circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's wide enough that that works. Well, I found that this one fell right in the middle. It didn't, uh, Mrs. Spreadsheet didn't get enough points to qualify or give us some guidance that it might be a public way, and it didn't actually come up with enough points to provide this guidance that it might be a private way. So this is clearly a tough one for me. Um, because it serves so few residences, um, I was headed toward um, considering it private. That's where I was looking at. It serves, it serves exclusively one house? Two, two, two houses. Two. And then two that front on North Street use it. But that makes it very similar to the <coughs> house right off Massasoit. Um, maybe it's called Massasoit. Massasoit Ave. Massasoit Ave. It makes it very similar to that. Yeah, yeah. What, I think what gives me... Well, I understand the width, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah. It's the width that I think makes this a challenge, because there is a I lane agree. for each travel direction. And, that's right. And that's plus parking. Of, hmm? Lanes plus parking. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. It also reminded me of the, the one that goes up the hill off of Jackson. Mm -hmm. Or Prescott. Prescott. Yeah. Taylor. Jim, do you have any, Taylor. 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 any wisdom you'd like to share with us on this? Um, you know, the street was created back in the early part of the century as part of the subdivision. The subdivision was never built. Part of that subdivision was also Northern Avenue. Uh, there's a recent land court ruling that the coal development out and back, which is a condominium project, did not have access on the UAB because even though it was recorded in the registry of deeds of the street, there's no formal process of it ever being accepted. So they didn't deny them access on, off of U Street for their subdivision. They said they're going to appeal it, but I don't know when that's going to be resolved. So if we were to make that a street, then coal could revisit that subdivision application? Or that development? It depends on the layout of the street that's accepted. And how far back it goes, I think that'd be the question. I hear you though. Yeah. Yeah. It looks to me, and this is where I, it looks like a, an oversized curb cut that somebody put a house right in the middle of the street before it could make its way into a land where you develop for other houses. And that's what it looks like to me. It just looks like a, a curb cut for a subdivision that never got built.
right, so the motion on the table is to basically to um, determine that View <coughs> Avenue does not meet the criteria uh, to be recommended to become a city street. So an I vote means we're not in favor of going any further with View Avenue. So all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. So it's six to one or five to one. Um, okay, next is Bank Avenue, the alley behind the Silver Scale. I make a motion that we not recommend approval of Bank Avenue as a public way. Second. <laughs> Ouch. <coughs> okay. Um, any discussion? It looks like an alleyway. I would not get a car down there. I, oh. <laughs> I, I agree. It doesn't meet many criteria for a public way. It meets a lot of the criteria we set up for a private way. It just looks like a private way. Yeah. Um, and the old deed records are always considered to be a driveway. In the late 1800s, the sewer commissioners took an easement for a sewer line. That's our only right that we have in there. So in this case, any further discussion? So in this case, a yes vote. The, the, the motion on the table is we do not believe that Bank Avenue meets minimal criteria to be recommended to become a city street. So all in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, now the tough one, Isabel. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept or make a recommendation to accept Isabella Street as a public way. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right, so a yes vote is uh, that we are saying that we would recommend that this be accepted. We would recommend that the City Council accept Isabella as a public street. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And last, Edgewood Terrace. That's the one that's on the street. I make a recommendation that we not recommend Edwards Terrace as a public way. Second. Mike. Well, my observation is I agree with the motion. It doesn't have any characteristics of a public way. Um, yeah. The last house on that particular way was built at the turn of the century and was his driveway. Uh, he originally installed all the utilities out to South Street, where he installed those utilities himself. In fact, I found the entry uh, permission given by the sewer commissioners to enter in like 1925, and he paid a fee accordingly. And then for somehow they were able to develop a number of house lots off that driveway and created Edgewood Terrace. So, so there are three houses in addition to the one at the end? I thought there was More four. Three or four. Three or four. So basically, if you look at the deeds, everyone has a right to pass and repass over a 10-foot strip of land to get access to their dwellings back there. For me, the 10-foot width is what tells me yeah. just uh, the fire department minimum is 14 feet. Mm -hmm. and just and was that a tree? Yeah, yeah there's a tree. Yeah. If the tree was gone, would that... Even if it were 14 feet wide, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel any differently. I mean, it's, it's, a long, it's a long street with one lane dedicated to two directions of traffic, and I just don't mm -hmm. see that being a public way. It's a long way to back up. <laughs> it's a long way to back up. <laughs> um, all right, and you guys are all set in terms of comments? All right, <coughs> so in this case, a yes vote is to say that we do not believe Edgewood Terrace would make a suitable city street. All in favor of that motion. Aye. Aye. Okay. <coughs> All right, so uh, what does this imply? Uh, this implies that uh, Church Street, Edwards Square, Isabella. Uh, Isabella 
Oh, we've got the petition. We have petitions for Edwards and Isabella, so church is the You'll one that's generous one for Church Street. I will. And then um, we'll have to go back to those streets. Yeah. The city solicitor is sending over some exact language. He wants to be in the registered letter going out to the residents on the street just to make sure that all the T's are crossed. On that note, I'm going to okay. excuse myself. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for that nice uh, summary. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> yes. Um, I noticed that the spreadsheet that was handed out has been reorganized. I just did it alphabetically, that's all. <laughs> is that the only change? Or that's the, the only change. There are no new streets? You no, know, the, the addition also was petition. There's a X about three quarters of the way to the right on the spreadsheet. It says petition. petition you know? Well, oh. there's an end there just to <laughs> show up. <laughs> I thought it was Italian. <laughs> but, um, I don't have I don't Okay. So those are the only changes. Yep. I just did it. It's a lot easier to find it alphabetically than it is by ward. So Richard will be sending you a new letter. Yes. And, and uh, we, just so you know, this letter goes out to the owners, not the residents. So uh, I would invite you to include a reminder to the owners who may not be as inclusive as I am that nice to let their residents know as well. And I think the inclusion is great. And thank you all. You guys have been great. You know, this is a tough job and, and it's appreciated. Uh, thanks. Um, okay, thanks. so thank you. contract for plumbing fixture upgrades to direct plumbing in the amount of $26,000. These are like those toilet seats of the aircraft the Air Force models. <laughs> 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 Pentagon approved toilet seats. <laughs> Just kidding. Want me to speak to this? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, be happy to. How many people do this? We don't get it. The works department had received a grant from the Department of Environmental Protection for water conservation fixtures to be installed in city buildings. So we put together a bid package, we worked with David Pomerantz and Central Services to determine what city buildings had substandard heavy water using fixtures, and we did an inventory, put together a bid, and came up with a contract here to replace <coughs> all those old fixtures that use a lot of water with new sticky low water usage fixtures. So um, I don't know how many, there's a wide variety of things that were bid. Just to give you a sense of the buildings, um, Memorial Hall, a parking garage downtown, Florence Fire, Academy of Music, Smith Boat, Fish Street Cemetery, Spring Grove, New Sandy Beach, and Mays Field. So some of the seasonal uh, facilities that we have in some other city buildings. Um, we had also um, taken upon ourselves to take care of some of the public works buildings already with energy efficient toilets and things that, that need to be done. So those were also covered by the grant. Um, we received three bids for this particular contract. We're asking the board to sign tonight. Um, the, the low bid uh, was twenty-six thousand five thirty-nine, as you know. Uh, another bid was thirty-four thousand one hundred, and the highest bid was forty-nine thousand five hundred and fifty. Wow. So quite a bit of a, a spread there. But we feel like we've got a, a reasonable price for uh, it. Can do the work. And can we do the installation? We are not doing the installation. This is to furnish and install in all these locations. Hmm. I'm just curious about, is this mostly toilets or all toilets? Or are there some faucets? Well, Gary, let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> and I'm also curious about if it is, well, whether it is or not all toilets. I want to know which toilet we're talking about. Because okay. I have a strong view on that. And I'm also wondering if Agents, uh, <laughs> hard sense. Uh, what, do you call, what is Dave Pomerantz's group called? Central Services. Central Services, but they must have a plumbing guy, right? Or a few. They do not have the, they can't take on the additional workload, I think, to put these in. No, so no, but they question. must have a maintenance guy. I'm sure they do. I wonder if 
who was involved in the selection of the specification? Of uh, we worked with our consultant to put together the specifications, which were provided to Dave Pomerantz and his crew to review them before they were put to bid. So I would say that they had plenty of opportunity to look at the specs and okay. squawk or yell or scream or agree or whatever they decided to do. There's one more question, if that's all right. There's been a lot of questions about uh, It is a lot of questions about <laughs> toilets. Are these mostly flushometer type toilets, or are they tank with tanks? They are flushometers. They so are flushometers for urinals. They are faucets. They are showers. They are water closets. They are toilet tanks. Oh, what's and a water closet? They are different uh, toilet seats, variety of things. How do you get a local facility? How many yeah. facilities? Seriously? They're very uncomfortable. Nobody uses them. There'll be no sitting down. Toilets do not come with toilet seats. Uh, oh, okay. Very well. The road. So like, are we talking like a uh, hundred? Uh, 15 flushometers for the water closets, 11 flushometers for urinals, 24 uh, metering faucets. Um, looks like we've got a couple of shower heads, a variety of different toilets and tanks. Some of them are handicap accessible, some of them are not. And we have 25 toilet seats. And is the grant paying the entire $26,000? Yes, it is. The contract is signed, and uh, work will be done, and we will be reimbursed. So we paid for the um, engineer, or whoever did the spec work, the, uh, the plumbing engineer? We paid for a small portion of it. It was also covered by the grant. So the engineering um, for the grant was completely covered. So it was a great grant for us. We were very pleased with it. Well, not um, to keep running on, but uh, what kind of savings do you think that we'll get out of this? At the moment, I can't tell you. But I will say that the grant requires that that calculation be completed and submitted to DEP when we look for our money. So I'd be happy to report back. That'd be great. Okay, so... Accurate <laughs> calculation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, grant is... Uh, Approving this contract for plumbing fixture upgrades. All in favor of approving the contract? Aye. Great. Contract for a topographic survey to propose for a proposed sewer line on North Bradford Street to a Northeast Survey Consultants in the amount of $2,500. Move approval. Second. This is not really as exciting as the toilet fixtures, but I'll talk about it. <laughs> the, um, the board may recall that. Uh, uh, we have been working on a new sewer interceptor for the industrial park. Um, Clyde Felder has been helping us with, uh, with that work, and I did an alternatives uh, study for us. And they had identified um, a recommended alternative that um, some of the sewer line actually runs outside of the sewer easement that we have out there. Um, it was a creative solution that will save us money, and we're quite happy with it. We just don't have all the topographic <coughs> survey for that route. So this contract is to hire a survey firm to go out there and get the pieces of the survey that we don't have to add it to the plan. Um, the contract is for $2,500. It's under $5,000, but the first survey they did for us was $4,000 and change, and the total sum of the contract ends up being more than five. So the procurement officer wanted the contract for the additional work. In, in the case of going outside of the boundary of the old line, it's easement. We assume we'll get the easement for the... We will need new easements. Um, we had a, a meeting with, uh, Ned had a meeting with uh, Amherst and Woodworking, who's amenable to working with us apparently on an easement there. And then the remainder of the sewer that is not in an easement runs through uh, a series of private ways. The Bradford Street North right. and the extension. Which I signed a petition for today. So if it becomes a public way, that easement will not become an issue. Uh -huh. way. No pressure, of course. Um, all right. No conflict there. <laughs> um. Well, if he, if he, you know, excuse him, who else would do it? 
That's right. That's right. We have the entire board refuses. Okay. Well, any questions about the contract? Yep. All in favor of approving the contract for the survey work? Aye. 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 Great. Old business private ways, we've something to add to that? No, I think we covered it all. Okay. Stormwater and flood control. There is a not much has happened in terms of uh, putting together a group that could look at the various ways of um, creating a, a fee structure for stormwater. Um, I, it seems reasonable to me that if we have a proposal on the table, the, the whole conversation around the best way for the city to handle this becomes a little clearer. This group, though, is going to look at the problem. There Maybe it'd be better not to call it a stormwater fee committee. Um, the city council thinks we should let them draw their own conclusion, this committee, uh, as far as how the city should fund stormwater moving forward. Um, so I, I guess we shouldn't presume it's going to be a coming back with a recommendation for a fee structure find another solution that we haven't thought of. <coughs> but in any event, this committee, uh, they, some people have been identified, but it's moved, the whole formation's moving slowly. So it's moving, but slowly. People from every ward. Uh, do we have anything else on story? We received some inspection reports today from the Army engineers. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Know if Jim has not. Uh, you know, it looks a lot like the last one. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of work to do, and we'd like you to do it. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. A lot of maintenance, capital, engineering, lots of different things we've talked about in the past. Um, the one thing that they did do is I think that they slipped on the Nolan River system from January right now to January 2014. Becomes achievable on some level for some of the work because of the $250,000 that uh, Ned was able to identify with the mayor to make that available for some maintenance activities. And do these have the force of uh, recommendation or is it more of a mandate? Or? Uh, well, I would say the word mandate would be more than something that would be nice to do. So, too soon to say any action is required. Certainly. At this point, no. Well, I mean, it's the same, you know, it's the, it's the directive to do work on the flood control system that we've had for a year now. So yes. Yeah. Well, it's the sort of thing that this committee will may help us identify how to fund that. Scratch tickets? Or what's the creative way? Exactly. <laughs> Sell bags. Pulaski Park. Back to you, Jim. Pulaski Park. I have been working on the grant application. We have sent an eligibility form over to the uh, CPC committee, and um, I was notified by staff there that the project is eligible for funding. For the so we kind of jumped on working on the on the grant. Been spending a fair amount of time putting it together. Bob Reckman one illustrious chair of this board was kind enough to come into the office and meet with me and offered to help um, gather support letters for the grant application. It's important that the grant application has community support. Um, we sort of divided things up. Bob was going to talk to residents and folks uh, downtown, people that served on the committee that he was the chair of. I've been talking to city uh, boards and committees about getting, uh, getting some support letters in that way. I sent an email out to uh, Various neighborhood groups in the, within the city, across the city today, um, suggesting you know the neighborhood groups are supporting um, uh, Pulaski Park and, and we're looking for support letters for the grant. Um, I have been talking to Stephen Stinson Associates about a, uh, a proposal for design, and we've been going back and forth um, with them to get the support necessary for the grant. So they've been great. <coughs> 
just want to correct anything just before February. So we were looking for letters of support from anyone that's interested in the park to just to, to submit something to me by the first of February so we, we can produce it with the grant. Did you um, talk, have to talk to the bid? Bob was going to talk to the bid. Okay. He was going to talk to the chamber. He was going to, like I mentioned, the people on the committee before. Um, it was actually kind of interesting to go back. Uh, Bob was really, really great. He brought his files in. He was the best, um, which was really needed to go through and try to recreate the history of everything that happened. There was a lot of discussion about the park for like two or three years. I mean, just my members of the board are pretty active in that. So <coughs> I was trying to um, create a chronology for the, for the grant because the uh, the CPC it has an interest in, you know, who do you want to contract with and how is that firm selected? And, um, you know, so that, that we needed to have a chronology about everything that we went through and just going through it. I was like, oh boy, it was, it was a heck of a lot of, a heck of a lot of uh, meetings and community involvement and, you know, particularly after the design competition, there was just so much input from people that uh, it seemed to me like it was a great, you know, great process at the time. And I'm trying to capture that in the grant so that the CPC can, can appreciate it. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, get that going. What'd you think that letter in the Gazette today about the uh, residential property at the back of the park? Oh, it's from the yet. oh, it's it's actually <coughs> it's from the guy who lives at the interest above the uh, candy store at the intersection of Main Street and Pleasant. Uh, about Sweeney? Yes, oh. I think it's him. Main Street. And he had he had uh, a dr a drawing of a residential property with the Italianate facade that would he, he, there's a very nice picture of what a, an apartment complex would look like back there. Yeah. Uh, he's making the case for more residential properties downtown. More opportunities for people who live downtown. Very, it's interesting. I, I will say that uh, going back to the files, you know, the hotel has uh, created a lot of contentious feelings among people about the park because there was a, a sense that the hotel was sort of taking over the park as the new entrance. And I think no matter what happens at the Roundhouse lot, if there's some building, it, no matter what they use, if it opens up onto the park, I think some of those feelings, people will always have these feelings that somehow someone's taking ownership of it. Um, but it was great to go back. There was a lot of passion. I think people have a lot of passion for the park. So at the moment, you don't need anything from us? I don't, other than if you want to go home as a resident and send me a letter supporting the, supporting the park. Bob Reckman was the first one to send me a letter. Great follow through. Okay, thank you. Solid waste planning update. Uh, I can speak for a minute. We've been working on, on sorting through the contracts. We had all those bids and disposal contracts to go through. I've started to um, arrange contracts. So I'll probably have them in front of the board uh, at the next meeting, disposal contracts, and um, one or two hauling contracts to kind of figure exactly what, uh, what we want to do there. I've been talking to Joe Cook, the procurement officer, about breaking up the bid into three or four contracts. So we're, we're working on that. Um, we're also working on um, the transition, I guess, which we had talked about last time about, you know, what are the dates, how do we want to approach the transition, do we can notice, and, and making sure that um, changing hours and operation and transfer station is done in a smooth way. So we are working on that. Um, David Valletta uh, recently completed another capacity study for the landfill, so we're also looking at how do we, how do we transition the closure of the landfill and, and these sorts of things. So we'll have um, more definitive information to the board probably for next meeting about suggested dates and, and how we want to tackle some of those things. Um, David uh, Bulletter and I did meet in Solway Solutions today just to have a, uh, a conversation about, you know, the plans moving forward the next few months. What are they, you know, they were wondering what to anticipate in terms of the contract and obligations, and we had a nice meeting with them today to bring them up to speed on decisions that the board has made to date and the direction that we're headed. So, went pretty well. So you think three more months? And their contract goes until the end of June? 
does. But we'll run out of space before that. I think we will. The term expires in, at the end of June, too, so we've sort of set that as the date. We think we'll be full by then, but at this point we don't have any, uh, any plans to file another operating permit. Repairs to Middle Roberts and the Lower Roberts Reservoir Dams. In my scene was never-ending discussion of dam repairs. We have two more reports in the works from uh, from GZA. Um, these are the last two. We had uh, contracts with them to, to do engineering analysis of the six dams that we're responsible for. And, uh, Ned and I recently reviewed the uh, reports for Middle Roberts and for Lower Roberts on the same beach. So um, I'm waiting for the final document from, from GZA, and I, I can send out executive summaries to the board if you, if you want to read them. But, uh, you know, the news is comparable here to some of the other dams. Um, I can talk about the same beach for a minute. Um, intermediate size dam with a high hazard potential found to be in fair condition. Um, there is some vertical cracking and displacement of a right abutment wall and some also also some vertical cracking on the left abutment. The big issue out there is insufficient spillway capacity like all our dams not able to pass the necessary design flood. Um, there are also some downstream slope stability um, factors of safety issues on, on the Sandy Beach Dam. Um, some of the recommendations briefly are raising the elevation of the dam by three feet and making um, changes to the spillway to increase the spillway capacity and to repair some of the concrete work and to install a new low level outlet. Um, design and construction for the repairs was estimated to be 1.7 million for that one. Um, I'll throw this out there too because I just I feel like at some point we need to have a conversation about this. Um, you know, Musanti Beach is a, it's a swimming beach, not a huge. Uh, not a huge part of the water system anymore. Um, so the thought of spending a lot of water enterprise fund money on the beach, I think is something that the city wants to consider at some point. I mean, the dam's in fair condition. We don't have to do repairs this week, and next week, and next year, right. the year after. They're a little more distant in terms of repair, but it's a lot of money. <coughs> and at some point, I think the city needs to have some discussion about what the source of funding is going to be to repair that particular dam. Um, Middle Roberts uh, Dam just upstream, uh, large size dam, high hazard potential again, also found in fair condition, so not too, too bad. Um, there's some masonry issues and uh, spawn and uh, some undermining on the spillway discharge channels and seepage. Some, some things that cause it to be in fair condition, not great condition. Um, their engineering analysis found again an in inadequate spillway capacity for this one, and also some spillway stability issues. Um, they're recommending construction of an emergency spillway, um, new downstream uh, concrete um, uh, spillway with some buttressing apparently and other concrete repairs in the spillway channel and the repair estimate for that one was about, uh, it was just shy of three million. So quite a lot uh, of money on those two. Um, Ned Nine, Dave Sparks, the water superintendent, Nicole Sanford met with GZA couple of Fridays ago to go through all the dam repair work um, in terms of priorities and scheduling and you know what do we need to do and when and when do we need to put things into the budget and Ned uh, will be prepared to talk and you know when we start talking about the budget with the you know the next sort of about I think like a five year idea of what we want to invest in for the dams and they're mainly focused on you know the main water supply dams, Ryan Reservoir, Mount Street Reservoir, and So there's a lot that needs to be done. Um, and we've been planning for it, but we just have one specific numbers now. Is the problem with the inadequate spillway that the dam will be overtopped and you get erosion around the edges? Right. Exactly. So if you look on the whiteboard behind you, you can see there's about just shy of $15 million in dam repairs that they're estimated right now. In past budgets, we budgeted. Um, uh, Three million for FY fourteen fifteen. We're going to carry that into fifteen sixteen now, 
and we're still waiting to hear from FEMA on the 1.2 million for the Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir Dam and that grant that we applied for. So that's currently what you'll be looking at in your five-year projection is what's underneath FY12, those three dams there is what we're looking at. So just so you're aware, there's some big numbers that are going to be hitting the Enterprise Fund in the upcoming years for work that, nest that needs to be done. In, in the form of bond, most likely. Yes. There was a little squib in the paper today about a <coughs> dam safety fund that was legislated at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, I go ahead, go ahead, Jim. I read a little bit on it. It's only half of it goes to dams. The other half of it goes to seawalls and right. stuff on the ocean side. So really, that I think it was a seventeen million dollar program gets cut in half to dams. And they didn't talk a lot about grants. They talked about low interest. Loans. Loans. It was all loans, right? I believe. So I'm not sure what effect that might have us. I don't at all. No, I'm not expecting a lot out of that program. Um, I think within the, within the industry, people were excited about the establishment and the approval of that of that program because it set up a, it set up an SROP mechanism. So if federal money ever became available, like through another stimulus round or something like that, the federal money is coming to the state. The fact that we have an SROP program for dams will allow a rapid distribution of the money to projects. So people in the industry are like, great, you know, it's a great law. If there's ever any money, there's a way to distribute it, but there's really no money. I mean, the city, uh, the city, the state really had to scramble and get very creative to find the 17 million that ended up getting in there. And um, you know, like Ned had mentioned, you know, half of it's going to city walls, and that was the issue that held up the dam legislation for quite a while. Was that the coastal communities wanted they wanted the program for sea walls that other people were going to get money for dams. So um, I would expect that those grants would go. Low interest loans for a high hazard dam support condition, and there's a bunch of them across the state. Are we not on that list of high hazard upper Roberts? Upper Roberts is. Right. Right. And then we're, we've heard from FEMA that we're eligible for money for that. I mean, if the SR program <coughs> comes out based on this new law, and we still don't have a check or some something in writing and then we would apply for a little more small for upper Roberts. Jim, I think I heard you say that one of the recommendations for Zany Beach was to raise the elevation of the structure by three feet. Do you know why they're recommending that? I think it had to do with the geometry of the reconfigured spillway to get more flow through it um, by having more of a head differential over the new spillway. Drive some more flow through there. That was the concept. Uh, Did they have a budget for taking it out? That is a very good question because they did not have a budget for taking it out. And one of the comments that we had on the draft was to get a budget for taking it out because I think that's part of the equation. The pool, the storage capacity is pretty low. From like a, I mean, an entity that provides water to its community, it doesn't seem like there's much of a reservoir there. Right. Because it's so shallow? Yeah. It's just shallow. Shallow. Yeah, with the middle dam or the lower dam? The lower one. The lower one. You see any beach dam, I mean, the, the, uh, the impoundment is not big at all. It's no, it's not. A couple of acres? And the middle, Robert, is, I don't know, 50, 100? How big is that? Um, big. 50 or 60, maybe. It's much bigger. Yeah, I think that's a good question. We did ask them to, to provide a cost for breaching because we figured at some point if we had a wider conversation about, you know, the importance of the dam to the city and the cost to maintain it, the cost to take it down, and, you know, it's all part of the consideration. It really plays no part in water supply at this point. Exactly. I know you said that at the beginning, and I, I can understand why. It has to do with the size of the impoundment. Because it's also backup, also. We don't even use that water unless we something happened. For instance, mm -hmm. if Ryan Reservoir were to breach, that reservoir is completely disconnected from the system. Well, then the middle reservoir is still 
it's got a missing piece, a pipe that can be reconnected for emergency. I don't believe we've used any of them for over 100 years. Um, 1960, according to Dave Sparks, was the <coughs> last time we, we drew water for drinking water out of the middle reservoir. Well, that's great, Jim. Thank you. I bring the good news. You to the do. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, claims uh, committee for 54 Rank Road. DJ, how much time do you think we should set aside? 15 minutes. <laughs> Could you get a little more synced? <laughs> Been working together too long. It's a sewer, it's a sewer yeah. claim. Yeah. Okay. So next meeting. The thirteenth of February. Fifteen. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Uh, Gary, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, review this evening? Well, the mention of budgets reminded me of what we went through last year on the Enterprise Fund budgets for water and sewer and the issue we always struggle with, which were at least historically fairly large increases. And um, we received some criticism for not being proactive about the needs of those two systems and the need for money to fix them up. And so as we enter the budget season, we ought to think about how we intend to get that message out so that when we have our discussion on these budgets, we, we have attempted to explain to the community why we need the money. And, and I remember uh, Gene Tacey feeling that he, uh, you know, I, was, I think he was trying to say that, look, if I have some facts and figures at my fingertips, then when I go to the Wolf Diner, I'm prepared to have a conversation with him. I think I could certainly do a better job making sure the city councilors are all the information they could possibly want. Okay. That's a good idea. Ned? I'm all set. Thank you. One of the reasons I bring these reports in with all these dollars is to every meeting is so that on some level people are basically aware of the work that we're doing and the work that needs to be done. Of course, the trick is, you know, prioritizing everything. Uh, not everything needs to be Today, we're coming up with a way within the budget that um, accomplishes management of risk and public health and things that we need to do in a way that hopefully is affordable for people. But that was one of the things that we've been trying to do, and um, we, you know, we continue to get more information about infrastructure needs within the city. This week, we received the draft report on the water system from Tate and Howard, who are doing that asset management study on the water side. So Ned and I and Dave Sparks are. Reviewing that with former board chair Dave Reckow, who's, who's helping with um, provide some technical review on the document. So um, the, there's some prioritized projects that will be coming out of that report as well. And uh, you know, I've thought in the past. I don't know if anybody might have been on probably not. Um, I don't know if the board members are familiar with the American Society of Civil Engineers report card, which is sort of the national. This is how we're doing in transportation, water, wastewater, um, all, all these different types of infrastructure. It gives a, you know, a, it's a report card with a grade and a description, what's needed, and the amount of uh, investment that's necessary in order to, um, to bring the grade up for this different type of infrastructure. Now, I've, I've thought that doing something like that on the city level would, would be a really marvelous thing to do because we, we're, we have a comprehensive wastewater plan, the water asset plan, we have all the dam work done. <coughs> the VHB roads um, asset management system that we use. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of tools in place that really identify work that needs to be done and 
certain schedule in terms of maintaining all the city's infrastructure and I think it would be just a great thing if we could find the time to take all that information and put it into like a two page document little report card so you can see well how are we doing on the water system well we've got these dams and we've got this thing in the transmission main this generator whatever it is and then people will see basically what we're doing and what the needs of the city are in terms of this infrastructure basic basic dollar values I think that was one of the things that came up there was a lot of criticism last year about that well what are the projects and why do we need the money and I know a lot of residents called Ned and you know were um, you know asking about the water rate increases but once you explain well it's this it's this it's that and people are like oh well geez I had no idea so we, we really weren't communicating very well last year about some of those things but we're trying to come up with ways to do, to do it a little better we looking at setting those rates early April? I would hope so. Late March, early April. So we're only a little over, well, basically two months. So that means we really need to start on this right away. Um, otherwise, we'll be explaining after the fact. TAP has already started working on just uh, basically the O&M side of the budget right now. Uh, we need to sit down with them and go through capital side, what we're going to include this year, and that will drive that process of the rates also. So we'll start putting together the plans and have discussion at the board meetings or uh, morning meetings again like we did in the past. We go mm -hmm. through these budgets. But I'm specifically speaking to Mike's idea that we need to do mm -hmm. more outreach. Yeah. Um, we think that would be mostly driven by the capital explaining the capital needs now? Yeah, I think I mean, so. why do we need more money next year than we need this year? And I think Jim, <coughs> Jim's comments, I think, get us in that direction. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just what, what format do we use to present it to the public? Right. You know, I'm, I'm, you know we, we, we often think about a public meeting, but until there's a crisis, those are poorly attended. Right. So maybe there's a, there's a, just another way to do it that is more efficient, a more efficient use of our time and staff time, and yet gets the message out. Yeah. Probably the biggest, and I think one of the easiest ways to get out is do a presentation at City Council. A lot of people watch that. I don't know how many, not, probably not the whole population, but... The councilors do. Yeah. <laughs> we do. could do a <laughs> Phil Newman show. We could do, the Gazette doesn't seem wicked interested in things like that. But. Shut up, they're water. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's something to think about. Is if I would say if we were going to get the word out it before we vote on higher rates, we need to be prepared to explain well ahead of the rate vote what we foresee in the next year or two that's going to necessitate more money than we spent this year. So we might need, we might want that information sooner than, for example, when we typically get together in small groups to look over the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get some feedback from city councilors. You know, maybe just to make sure they understand it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think we have another by the, the general committee. All good? Yeah. And Jim? I'm good. What's uh, happening on River Road, if anything? The other FEMA grant. Uh, that's under federal review right now also, along with the erosion below Mizani Beach. So we have three projects in the mix that all at the federal level being reviewed. And uh, I sent the email out to Scott McLeod of NEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, last week. And he's still trying to get information for FEMA when they think they'll be done with the review. So, uh, these have been in, in the works for two years now, I think. So, they may have no money. Oh, there's plenty of money. Okay. Yes. That's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs>
In fact, they were talking about there, w there weren't enough projects to use up all the money in past rounds. FEMA? FEMA. FEMA. We need, a, we need more disasters to match the funding level. We need quicker reviews. So yes. Uh, well, <laughs> New Jersey and New York are waiting. <laughs> They've gotten their money. Actually, I, uh, Ned and I have spoken recently. I circled back to him about um, some kind of a policy for inventory. Mm -hmm. And um, he's newly energized about that, I think. Um, and also, we had discussed at that same time some kind of an electronic uh, version of all of the various policies. And at this point, they've all been scanned. And now we need to have the optical character recognition turn them into text documents so you can search and so that, that's kind of moving. That's all I got. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you very much.